And now you can stay tuned for Mike making fun of me for being long-winded, which I'm not. I'm actually not. Um, these What Sold videos are long because I'm doing two full weeks at a time rather than one week at a time, but I'm going to try to keep them uh, shorter, and my regular video videos, I do try to keep them a little bit shorter. But there's a wealth of information here, so whether he makes fun of me or not, um, I find that I learn so much by watching other people's What Sold videos, haul videos, and all of that. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hi, YouTubers and thrifters. My name is Carrie, and I'm a part-time reseller and a long-time talker. So if you've got nothing to do for the next seven and a half <laughs> hours, I've got so many things to tell you. Sit back. I don't want any comments. Just listen. No, we want comments. <laughs> what do you think about that back? He said, I don't know. I'm just happy to see my soulmate. Okay, right off the bat, I'm gonna kind of whip through these, but right off the bat is this really pretty purple mohair coat. I bought this recently in the spring, I think it was maybe March, and it did sell in April. So don't be uh, leery of listing winter items. If you're on eBay, they're going all over the world. This coat went to Australia. Now this is mohair and the, the brand is Paul Levy. This is the second Paul Levy mohair coat I've sold, vintage. So I would recommend if you see one to pick it up. I paid $8.99 for this. I had it listed for $119 and I took a best offer of $95. This one was a little bit shaggy and a tip for mohair. I actually took Mike's um, shaver, his, his hair shaver thing and shaved the mohair with the longest uh, setting and it worked beautifully. So cool little tip for cleaning up uh, long haired mohair items. Next is this Talbot's Women's Open Front Cardigan. This was um, a really beautiful cobalt blue. I paid $3.99 for this and it sold for $22.99 plus the buyer paid shipping. Talbot's is a big seller for me. I have a Talbot's in my area and it does sell well. Okay, okay, next is an item that I bought for 99 cents. This sat in my closet for quite a while or in my store for a while. It was a really cool brand. Um, Jean Ewing is the brand and it's out of California and this was hand dyed fabric. So high end fabric, but just not that well known. So it did sit for a while, but I did sell, sell this for $18.99 and buyer paid shipping. Next is a Buffalo Sabres women's tie front jersey uh, simple sale sold for $15.99 plus the buyer paid shipping next is another Talbot's this is Talbot's petite Talbot has a big line of petite items so this sold for $18.99 and the buyer paid shipping next a definitely be on the lookout shoe brand these are called Allbirds these are wool and you can just throw them in the wash and they come out beautifully. These are called the Wool Runners. They retail for upwards of $100 and they, they do really well on the resale market. So these I sold for 50, these were men's I sold for $53 and the buyer paid shipping. Next was another coat that sold in April. Now this one was a bit of a, um, discount compared to what I'd had it at over the winter. It sold for $45. It was a short sort of swing coat wool vintage 60s and I think I paid $4.99 for that. Next I do have a book. This was from an estate sale actually and this is a vintage Kohler plumbing fixtures book. I don't have the date here exactly but it was from like the 30s or 40s so really specific content in that book you know somebody's gonna who's a plumber is gonna be interested maybe somebody who works for Kohler the brand it was just filled with diagrams and plumbing information and so I got that as part of a, of a lot I would say I was into it for less than a dollar and it sold for $22.99 plus buyer paid shipping here we go another wool a uh, big coat that went to Australia so this was I called it mod couture luxury faux vegan fur the brand was cheyenne highly recommend looking out for this brand this was absolutely gorgeous i don't think the pictures do this coat justice um i paid 7.99 for this and i sold this for 120 dollars 
plus buyer paid international shipping, which we all know to Australia is not inexpensive. So they're into that coat for close to $200. Totally worth it, it's gorgeous. Next is a straw bag that went to St. Croix. And this I picked up because I thought it was a little more vintage than it was. When I opened it up, the brand name was Euro and I could tell that it just wasn't as vintage as I first thought. So I came down a little on the price and I sold that for $20 buyer paid shipping. Next, another pair of Allbirds. I bought these at completely different times of the year. I thrifted them differently. I don't believe they were part of the same uh, donation, but they sold within a couple of weeks of each other. These are women's and they're this beautiful, rich red color. And I sold those for $46.99 plus the buyer paid shipping. Next, a quick and fast sale, Billabong. Billabong is a great brand that does well for me with um, casual items, sportswear, in this case, a pair of women's distressed shorts. I paid 99 cents for those and they sold for $15, so a fair sale. Next, this was part of the estate sale that I went to recently, and so I'm into this for less than a dollar, and I paid, I, I uh, I realized $16.99 on that buyer paid shipping. Old vintage um, sticky photo albums do sell. Even if the pages are, you know, really, they, they get yellowed, they're not really usable anymore. People use them for all kinds of crafts, uh, decor, and that sort of thing. So this had that really vintage flower power 60s, 70s vibe, and I was able to sell that for $16.99. Next was a Zara piece. So if you've seen a couple of my hauls, you'll know that my thrift store either bought out a Zara palette maybe or had a donation, but I have quite a few Zara Nuba Tags items that I scooped right up when I saw them coming in. So this one came in early and I paid full price for it. This is a XXL, which the larger plus sizes always sell very well. And it sold really quickly for $48.99. It's a new with tags uh, dress. Next, I sold again in April a full on 100% wool Pendleton skirt suit set, vintage. Heather gray um, A line skirt, and I sold that for $30, buyer paid shipping. I always, always pick up Pendleton, and I do find Pendleton in my area. Um, I live in a mid-sized city with an aging demographic, so there are a lot of estate sales, a lot of people donating vintage clothing, and so I do find it quite regularly. Pendleton is always a pickup for me. Next, another brand that is almost always a pickup, and that's Woolrich. Very high quality, very expensive to buy, and so this Woolrich was a XL Petite, and it was a blue hoodie, full zip sweatshirt, bread and butter kind of sale. I sold it for $18.89, no, $18.89, buyer paid shipping, and I purchased that for $0.99 cents on my Monday $0.99 cent day. Next, a brand new without tags. This was absolutely immaculate. Nobody had worn this. It, I did thrift it, but it was clear that somebody popped the tags and had it in their closet and just did not wear it. Um, this was uh, Arthur Levine Tahari, which is another great brand. It was an open uh, front blazer jacket in a plus size of 14W. And I sold that for $44.99 and the buyer paid shipping. Next was this um, True to My Heart Upstate New York t-shirt. Probably not something I would recommend buying. I bought it on pure sentiment, sentimentality. So um, I, pay, I paid 99 cents for it and I sold it for $11.99 and it went off to Philadelphia. Next, really great brand log and look piece. This is um, blue fish clothing. If you find blue fish clothing, it will almost always be this log and look layered um, art to wear. This, in this case, the fabric was actually hand painted and um, it doesn't really look like much, but it's very high quality. And so that did sell in my 30% off sale. I, it dropped significantly down to $68.99 and the buyer paid shipping. 
as soon as that price dropped down, it just sold. So in that case, there's there's an example where the 30% uh, off sale did bring me a good sale on that item. Next, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous pair of men's cowboy boots by Tony Lama. Great brand, well-known quality leather footwear, Western boot, cowboy boots. I definitely underpriced these boots. I had comped them, but I don't think I went deep enough into the comps because when I saw the color of these and the condition that they were in, I think I actually could have doubled the price that I got these for. Maybe 125, 130. I got 74.99. They sold within a couple of hours. So I always know, you know, if you underprice something, somebody will just swoop in there and, and scoop it up. So uh, those went for $74.99. Now I paid uh, 20, they were marked $24.99 and I had a 25% off coupon. And so it was still a great sale for me and I'll take those sales, you know, any day of the week. I just think that I could have got more for those. Next, a pair of men's black leather and fabric military combat boots. These were uh, spike proof. I paid $5.99 for these. These were new, uh, brand new, unworn, and I got $54.99 and buyer paid ship. Next. Oh, I love this sweater. This is this is the true vintage kind of sweaters that I just love. I paid $2.99 for this. That was full price. That's what they were asking for it. It's this vintage Argyle full button front grandpa cardigan. I've talked about this in my other um, video just yesterday. List these not just under men's but also under women's because a lot of women like to wear these. Uh, they're very stylish, many ways to wear them. And the Argyle, the brown and the white, it was an old Sears, Sears sweater and I got $45 for that. So that's a great, that's that's to me like a perfect flip. $2.99. I paid and a $45 quick sale. That's a great vintage flip. Next was this um, unframed cross stitch or sampler. And this was a saying that said something about, it was nautical maritime um, about ships and romance. And it had this three masted schooner. And I sold that for $14.99 plus the buyer paid shipping and wrote me a very nice note on the um, um, feedback, just how she was so excited to have it framed and put it up on our wall. So that's always fun to get. Next was this uh, Rafe or Rafe, Rafi, uh, really cool linen and patent leather What a, and, and beads. What a cool mix of fabrics and materials. This was a beige and black clutch and I sold that for $25. Those sell for quite a lot. So they they uh, retail for a lot. The resale value on that brand is not particularly great, I don't think. Next, coach bag. Now, um, I've gotten burned on coach a couple of times. So you have to be very careful that you're not picking up a fake. So this was real. And um, I've actually had items taken down from eBay and they're very strict, so you really need to be careful. What I've started to do is not put them up on eBay first. I'll put them on Poshmark, I'll put them on Depop, I'll put them over, you know, once I've taken a look at them and once I've checked it over and believe that it's that it's authentic, I'll first put it up on Poshmark because if it's not authentic, there'll be an expert there who will get on it pretty quickly and I can take it down. Um, for the most part, I don't pick up a lot of coach. I'll only pick it up unless I'm absolutely sure, but I have gotten burned. So in this case, I didn't. This was an authentic coach bag that I paid $12.99 for at my thrift store, and I sold this for $89.99, and the buyer paid shipping. This was vintage from the 90s. I was able to find the style by using Google Lens, just taking a snapshot of this, putting it into Google Lens, and it brought up all of the information on the style number, <clears throat> and all of that. Next was this really pretty, I loved this, yellow kitchen bakeware piece of enamelware. It was in beautiful condition. And so I got $31.99 for that. I, I picked that up for $1.99 at my thrift store. That's something you want to be uh, very careful in bakeware to look at the bottoms and the sides on the inside to be sure that it's not too scratched up. 
from use wear usage. Next was just this simple little sale. This was a cool uh, burrito by Jansport. Jansport is a great brand in terms of backpacks and things like that. So this was a little accessory to go into a backpack and it rolled up and it was a way to keep cords and electronics um, organized. So I paid 99 cents for that. I only sold it for $10.49, but it was a quick flip. Next was Petite Sophisticates. Now this is a good brand, Petite Sophisticates, but I have a, I had a hard time selling this particular uh, two-piece set, and that's because it was really hard to display it without a, I, I probably should have had this model, but um, it just didn't show well hanging on hangers um, because it was a thin material and it was a two-piece set. It just didn't, I didn't think it looked as nice on the hangers as it really was. And so I only got $10 for that. I took the offer because it had been in my closet so long. I just wanted to send it on its merry way. Next, a really, <laughs> this is my lowest sale I've had in quite a while, $4 book. Um, same thing. This is on my bookshelf. I love to collect dog books and I'm sort of like thinning out the uh, number of books I have in my own personal collection. And it had, been, it had been sitting for quite a while and I got an offer of $4 and I took it. Next was this youth pair of Timberland uh, boots. They were in great condition for having been used. They were used by a boy somewhere in the world who was pretty careful with his Timberlands. And um, so these sold for a very nice price of $49.99, buyer paid shipping, and I paid $5.99 for those. Next was this unopened uh, factory sealed gift set of the movie Bad Teacher. And it had some, it had a, a book with it that was um, one of those books about like funny answers that kids give on tests and things like that. So it was this gift set. And um, so that sold for $25.99. I paid 99 cents for that. I don't pick up a lot of uh, DVDs or movies or things like that, but I knew that be, being a gift set like that, that I'd get something for it. I was a little surprised that it actually even went that high. Um, I priced it high and waited to see what I got and I, I sold it. So I was happy with that. Next were a pair, a set of two different wool skirts. Again, here goes some more wool out. This went out to a Nebraska. Nebraska? North Dakota, sorry. <laughs> sorry. These went out to North Dakota, and one was Pendleton. One was uh, kind of a no-name brand, but it was new old stock. It still had its original tag. And I sold, together, I sold those for $48.50. One was $0.99, cents, the no-name brand, and the Pendleton skirt I paid $3.99 for, so that was a nice sale. That buyer sent me a note that she has a, <clears throat> a group that she works with, and they um, fund a thrift store in their area that uh, they donate to an orphanage and a school, an elementary school in uh, Liberia, which is the poorest country in the entire world. And she said, you know, I'm just letting you know, and if you have anything extra, even bits of fabric, we make things with it, we patch things, and we would love to put something in our store. So I took her up on that offer. I thought it was a really great opportunity to send some additional items. So I found some things that I had bought that had holes, little holes in them, or were missing buttons and things like that. And I packed a uh, the $19 large flat rate box full of those kinds of items. I asked her first, are you sure you want things that you know aren't in perfect condition? And she was um, very gracious about that and said that they would definitely get on it and fix those items up, put them in their thrift store, and the profits would go to uh, their nonprofit project. So I was really happy with that sale, with meeting that buyer, and with being able to donate something that you know I was probably never gonna get around to fixing anyway. Um, Next was this Castleberry women's uh, two-piece pleated skirt set, uh, sweater set. This is absolutely beautiful. And Castleberry is a, is a great brand. It's it's up there with some of those vintage brands. It's not quite St. John, but it's, it's up there. It's highly sought after. This only went for $34.29. It was part of my 30% off sale, but part of the reason was that the elastic waist on the skirt had lost its elasticity. So the buyer was either gonna have to fit it just perfectly or have that altered. So I made that known, I disclosed that in the listing. And so I didn't get as much for that as I might have if it had been in perfect condition. I'm guessing I probably would have got in the neighborhood of $75 for that set. 
Next, here's a set of books. This is by C.S. Lewis, and this was his Space Trilogy. This is a box set. Box sets are always something to pick up if they're in good condition and the author is, is sought after. C.S. Lewis definitely has a following because of his philosophical and uh, spiritual sorts of writings. And so this is um, sci-fi, but it has that underpinning to it. And so it's definitely sought after. And I sold that box set for $45.99 and I paid just 99 cents. So that's a great sale. Next was another great sale. I paid $2.99 for this Madewell dress. This went for $60. Madewell is one of those brands that is not always a pickup. It's been around a long time. It's very popular, but it's also really oversaturated in the market. So you wanna be very careful about what you pick up that's made well and comp it and see if it's something going. Um, this dress was very popular actually because it kind of goes along with the cottage core aesthetic that's very current right now. And it was sold out on their website. So it is a current style, it was sold out. And so I did get $60 for that. So that was a great sale. Next. Always a pickup, Harley Davidson, just classic Americana, uh, biker t-shirt. This one was new with tags and it had a really cool uh, black wolf um, design on the back. It had this spell out on the front. It was from Bristol, Connecticut and it was new with tags. So I was able to sell that for $28.99 and I purchased that for $2.99. Next was, uh, this was in a haul where I talked about how I never buy LuLaRoe, but I did buy this LuLaRoe and that's because it was a larger size. It was a 3X and it was a sought after style of dress and it was new with tags. So it had three um, hits going for it. So boom, I sold that right away. And I got uh, $34.99 for that, buyer paid shipping. So I was very happy with that fast flip of LuLaRoe. Next, great sale. This was another set of boots. Now I bought this the same day and from the same thrift store that I bought the other set of boots. These are also ostrich leather. So you can see the, um, the pores with the plumes. And these were by Lucchese, which is an even higher end brand of boot than the Tom, Tony uh, Llama. So um, these I sold for $179 buyer paid shipping. These, I went up to the counter with my items. I had the other boots, the Tony Lama boots, and the cashier said to me, look behind me in their case on their counter where they keep special items. And they had this, he said, if you want a real pair of boots, here's a beautiful set. I immediately snatched them up. So I was all to the kindness of the um, cashier who, you know, clued me in on these boots and um, they were marked up. So they were priced at $59.99, but I had a 25% coupon. So I made sure that that was applicable to these boots. It was. So I got them for about $45 and at $179, that's a great flip. So even though I paid way, way up for those, I knew that they would be a, a good seller, a good sale. Next was this vintage uh, graphic t-shirt women's. It was a women's style. So it was kind of the more uh, petite cut, the feminine kind of cut to it. It was from the 70s. It was single stitch. So I had the single stitch um, sleeves and hem. It was made in the USA. It had all the hallmarks of a true vintage women's t-shirt. And it had this um, kind of comical, you know, uh, portly gentleman, uh, nude and eating grapes. So um, the kind of gluttony, I guess you'd say. And I, there was no information on what that graphic was supposed to mean or what it was about. So I just randomly listed some words I thought that kind of described, they were descriptive of that particular graphic. Grapes, vineyard, wine, renaissance. They just had, I just pulled these words out and this t-shirt got a lot of interest. Um, it eventually sold for $28.99, which was my full, asking price, I believe, but it sold really quickly and um, the buyer paid shipping. Next was this um, Winter Silks, which is another great brand. It's it's a kind of a bread and butter brand, Winter Silks dress. And this was a red button down long sleeve dress that I sold for $25.89 buyer paid shipping. And I paid $1.99 for that dress. It was $3.99 and I got a half price. 
Next was a North Face jacket. Um, this one was part of the sale, so uh, I had it marked up, but it sold for $27.99, buyer paid shipping. This was the Denali Fleece in this really pretty pink mauve color, kind of a raspberry color. It was a full zip. Um, it sat for a while. There's there's a lot of these out there on the market, so I think I think the price was more fair when it when it came down with the 30% off. So I wasn't too disappointed that it went as part of the sale. Okay, here was my big bolo. This was awesome. This was such a fun, great find. It sold within hours of me listing it. This was new. It turned out to be new without tags. It still had the actual tag where somebody had pulled it off. It was clearly never worn nor washed, uh, cleaned, anything. It was just absolutely immaculate. So I was able to use a stock photo uh, to display it. This was Ralph Lauren US Open Tennis Championships 2018. It was called the Ball Boy Varsity Jacket. I was able to find that out on the uh, Ralph Lauren website. And I sold that for $179.99 with free shipping. And that's because there were some others that were being sold that were also going with free shipping. Those were going for $185 with free shipping. So I just knocked $6 off. Mine sold literally within hours of listing it. Next was this wallet. And this was new old stock. And it just it was a tooled leather wallet. And proud to be a US veteran. And it had a US flag on it. I sold it for $16.09 and the buyer paid shipping. I paid 99 cents for that. Um, next was this Calvin Klein women's uh, signature logo scarf. I kind of lost out on this sale because it dropped down to $9.99 and I forgot that I had free ship on it. So it was in the 30% off sale. So that was $9.99 with free shipping. So, and I paid $1.99 for that. So, that was a real miss on my part, um, but you know, you have to let those sales go through. Next was a Dimensions Flower uh, cross stitch sealed vintage kit. I always pick these up if they're priced right. This one didn't go for very much, $11.99, but I paid 99 cents for it. And so that's a quick bread and butter sort of flip. Next was this Burton women's jacket. It was a fleece lined a ski hoodie. This had a big flaw. It had a, a kind of a burn mark in the back and it had some scrubbing on the front. This is an example where people will pick up brands like this, you know, strictly for function. Um, they're not concerned if it has a few little blemishes and things like that. It's got a cool design. They're gonna go out skiing in it. They're gonna go outdoors in it, kind of get it, you know, maybe a little wrecked anyway. And so um, I sold that for $22.99, buyer paid shipping. So I didn't I didn't pick it up knowing those flaws were there. I, I um, noticed them after I brought it home, but I was still able to list it because it was such a sought after and strong brand. Next are these Capizio, which is a big name in dance. If you're not familiar with dancing, uh, Capizio is a, a good brand for dance shoes of all types. These were tap shoes, new in the box. Um, and so I sold those for $35. I picked those up for $2.50. They were $4.99 and I paid uh, $2.50 on half price day for those. They sat for a while, but not that long. I have, I think, three pairs of those I picked up and I sold two now and I have one left to go. And that's, oh, I have one more. And that is just this little pair of deer foam slippers that sold on April 30th. And they are, um, I paid 99 cents for these. They're kind of new without tags, um, beautiful condition, really pretty pink pastel and floral, basic bread and butter. So 99 cents into 16.99 with the buyer paying shipping. That's a, a real simple, you know, put them in the poly bag and off they go. So um, I'll do those all day long. Um, okay, so that's it for my April sales on eBay. Now let's go over and see what sold on Poshmark during that same period. Okay, so I have a few sales. I don't have a lot on Poshmark and that's really a reflection of the time that I've been putting into Poshmark. I've been really focusing on eBay these last few weeks um, with my travel back and forth to see Mike in New Jersey. And so um, first is this Trogs Brewery Sherpa Fleece. This was a 2XL and XXL. I listed it under men's and women's and I sold this for $28 and I paid, I paid $2.50 for that, half price of $4.99. Next were these Toms. 
suede leather clogs or mules. These were new, without box, without tags. They were the Layla uh, brand or brand style, and they sold for twenty-five dollars. Next was this new with tags Zara, so part of that haul. And this was a white cotton cropped peasant shirt, really, really cool shirt, and that sold for twenty-five dollars. Next was new with tags Lulu's. This was an ivory lace mini shift dress. So I call it, I have Lulu's brunch dress. I didn't make that up. Um, it's not something I kind of would put into a listing unless I got it from somewhere. And that's, that's actually the style name of that dress. So the Lulu's brunch uh, mini ivory lace dress. And that sold for $50. And I paid $3.99 for that dress. So that was a great sale. And um, next was this wool uh ice wool from iceland striped scarf and the the brand was alafoss this got a lot of attention but it only sold for 15 dollars, and that's because it was really scratchy ice wool really cool looking um but you have to be pretty careful wearing it because it's really kind of itchy and scratchy so i pick up anything iceland it's very popular iceland is a was prior to the uh, pandemic a hugely popular tourist destination. I also have a best friend who's living there um, and actually became an Icelandic citizen uh, studying Icelandic and so I'm always kind of drawn to that. Next was this beautiful and I use the word exquisite and that was my word because it was amazing leather and calf, uh, calf hair, pony hair. Um, it was A. Bellucci, that was the brand. It was Italian leather and it was a hobo bag. I paid $12.99 for that, I paid up. I thought very long and hard about possibly keeping that bag, um, but I just don't carry a handbag like that, and so I did sell it for $60 on Poshmark. Next was this vintage uh, 1980s enamel buckle stretch belt. Doesn't, uh, doesn't this just look 80s? Um, possibly like late 70s, but it was enameled, uh, kind of had a butterfly shape, and um, I sold that for $26, so that's a good sale. I paid 99 cents for that. Um, and next, I think this is in, yep, this is still in April. This is, um, this is a brand called Tail, and it's a brand that retails for a lot. It's a golf and tennis brand. Um, I don't know that the retail uh, the resell value is anything fantastic, but I did sell this shirt for $20 and I also got that for 99 cents. Um, next was this, nope, that sold on May 1st. Got to hold off and wait on that. So I did have a couple of, uh, other sales. I had a sale on Depop. Now I don't have a lot listed on Depop. I just have found that it's not really kind of my market, but I do put some of my real true vintage stuff over there and it does get attention. I sold this really cool um, uh, two-piece jacket and long A-line full maxi skirt in a, a velvet or velveteen in this really pretty caramel color. So um, I sold that for 60, in the 60s, I don't have it right here in front of me, I'll pop that up obviously, or over here next to me somewhere. Um, but that was uh, 60 some or 67 maybe dollars on uh, Depop buyer paid shipping. Okay, so I have three sales on Mercari. Now I have started cross-listing over to Merc Mercari. What I haven't started doing yet though is really getting super active on the platform. So I'm not sending out offers to likers or anything like that. So I probably, in order to make more sales over there, I'm gonna have to start um, doing that like I do on Poshmark and eBay. So the first sale was just this really sweet little um, Speedo toddler sun hat with uh, SPF 50. I paid 99 cents for that. It sold for $14 buyer paid shipping. Next were these Chacos uh, Eco Tread sandals. When I picked these up, I didn't realize they were youth. I generally don't pick up that much youth stuff. Here I have two right in a row, um, but I didn't realize it, but they were brand new. Uh, the tag had just been kind of pulled off, but it was partially on there. So these were new Chaco Eco Tread sandals, uh, girl size, and I, pay, I, I paid uh, $2.99 for those and sold those for $33 buyer paid shipping. Next was a really quick sale, and this was a vintage Levi's denim trucker 
jean jacket. It wasn't anything particularly special in terms of um, being super vintage. It probably was about the 90s or so, but I paid $5.99 for that. It sold for $40, buyer paid shipping. The only interesting thing about this was that on the tab, on the tab on a Levi's jacket, there's normally the little red tab right here and it says Levi's. This one didn't have anything on it, it just was blank. It had the little R um, trademark copyright um, in the circle. And I didn't really understand. I thought for sure this was probably, I got it home and I was so disappointed. I thought, oh boy, I've, you know, I've picked up a counterfeit Levi's jacket. What, what are the chances, right? But I did some further research and I found that they actually, about one in 100 Levi's jackets are blank. And that's because they need to copyright not just Levi's uh, words and logo, but also they need to copyright the little tag itself, just the red tag itself. And so in order to make that legal, they need to occasionally send out one in 100 with the blank tag. So I did put that in the listing and that's just some random information to know. So if you do find a jacket, um, a Levi's denim jacket, and it's blank, doesn't mean that it's, that it's uh, doesn't necessarily mean that it's a, a, a counterfeit jacket. So interesting little tidbit. And let's see if I had anything on Facebook Marketplace this week. Okay, so I had one sale on Facebook Marketplace during the last two weeks of April, and that was this Lands and One Piece swimsuit in this gorgeous cobalt indigo blue. I love this color. Um, it was a size 18. I paid 99 cents for this on my 99 cent day, and I got, let's see, I, I collected $39. That was including shipping, so the buyer paid, I probably got about 31 or $32 for the actual swimsuit. So, that, so I just wanted to make a note that last night after um, I finished this video, the What Sold video, Beck and I were just about settling down for the night and the alarm started going off in the hotel and we had to evacuate and we had to sit outside for about an hour or so. Um, it turned out to be actually really fun because we met some of our neighbors here in the hotel and I met a lovely couple across the hallway from us who loved Beck and they had two little kids and you know it just it turned out to be really kind of cool there's a fire pit out there out back of the hotel um and so it worked out but i'm hoping for a much less eventful night <laughs> oh stay here honey stay here back let's come over here and sit down come on honey come on back Ha 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 ha.